ladies and gentlemen, in the face of the current events, the near combat near the coast of Crimea between the Russian and the British, we have to ask ourselves one important question and possibly two important questions but in this video I'm gonna talk about only the first important question is the limited nuclear exchange between major powers possible and I would argue that it's near impossible it almost cannot happen near impossible why three factors are very important here the three factors are population density number one number two infrastructure that's number two and number three preparedness how ready are we for a nuclear war and those things gonna create situation where limited nuclear exchange is nearly impossible between the major powers the only city that we know that is ready to protect its citizens in a case of a nuclear war at least over the first couple of weeks is Moscow no other city is ready Moscow is the only city ready we know that they are uh, subway is big and very deep 100 feet underground we know that also they have bunkers that are shallow but they are a couple feet underground and they are on rollers because one of the things that people do not consider even if they live in a brick or concrete house with a subterranean basement if that subterranean basement is shallow you know it's only a couple of feet underground then if let's say an area gets hit with one megaton nuke and uh, the basement the building is within half a mile maybe even a mile of the where the nukes goes off when the detonation happens the basement itself not just the building gonna collapse and they're gonna be buried alive so uh, preparedness you know preparedness in Moscow and possibly other Russian series major series is pretty good and also they have a huge country Russia has half the population of the United States with country twice the size of the United States I'm talking roughly not exactly but that's all we need here we need roughly we do not need exactly so they can evacuate people relatively quickly into middle pretty much of nowhere they also at least in the case of Moscow are prepared for at least a couple of weeks of you know surviving when the fallout is the most dangerous so that's one reason preparedness so uh, Russia is uh, at least a little prepared for the nuclear war when United States and China are not prepared at all our inf and then number two you know infrastructure so American infrastructure when it comes to nuclear war is terrible because yes we have some fallout shelters within major cities but major cities are gonna be targets and a fallout shelter shelter not gonna make you survive a nuclear blast you need both your shelter has to be capable of surviving both surviving nuclear nuclear blast the initial detonation and then the fallout in addition the shelters probably don't, our shelters probably don't even have two weeks of water for a lot of people that would be you know squeezed into those shelters so uh, they're kind of useless actually when it comes to major cities so our infrastructure is terrible because we don't have subterranean basements and we do not have brick and concrete houses everything is pretty much out pretty much made out of wood so you cannot hide inside of your house because it's not gonna protect you and if you go to the shelter you are probably gonna die from dehydration unless you know the blast gonna kill you immediately so that's infrastructure uh, China doesn't even care about infrastructure I guess they cannot afford to care yet about the infrastructure we could but we don't okay 
Then a number three factor, you know, uh, it's uh, preparedness, infrastructure, So the third factor is uh, population density. So for example, China has a very high population density and US coastline has very high population density. So for example, if we have a nuclear exchange with, uh, let's say there is uh, 10 nuclear warheads, one megaton each coming from Russia against United States and 10 American warheads with each 10 megaton each coming through the defenses and they all detonate over the cities because Russians are more prepared we're gonna suffer much heavier losses and we may say that you know we sent 10 nukes but that's not enough because we suffered three to four times high as high losses in population than the Russians guess what happens we send more nukes Russians say no way you cannot send 20 nukes against us for 10 of our nukes. We send in more, more nukes too. And eventually we end up with a full-fledged nuclear war, which I'm gonna talk about in the next video. This video is only about impossibility of a limited nuclear exchange between major powers. Then China, let's say we have war with China. We send, we drop 10 megatons of nukes onto them and then drop 10 megatons onto nukes onto us. But because of the population density, they lose many more people. So they keep on sending nukes against us and we could keep on retaliating because they say that's not enough. Maybe, just maybe, the solution to this problem would be to elect women presidents in Russia, China, and United States who would look for another option to even the score than the military option. And they would simply say, listen, we exchange 10 megatons, 10 megatons, okay. However, we're gonna sue you in international courts so you pay monies for the extra damage that you cause to us. You know, uh, and then you're gonna have to put value on human lives. You're gonna have to put a price tax. You're not gonna have an option because the only other option is grave. It's a full fledged nuclear war which in the second video I'm gonna show that the full-fledged nuclear war even with excellent anti-ballistic missile defense systems uh, you can you know we're gonna lose probably United States within the first half a year to a year gonna lose uh, 250 million people literally I mean and I'm gonna explain why but it's going to be in the other video. It's going to be in the video about the nuclear war itself. So I'm a really, I'm going to really glad to hear from you. How do you think a limited nuclear exchange would be possible? And how do you think that, you know, conventional conflict would not quickly deteriorate into a nuclear exchange between, you know, uh, what many people, many religious people, I'm not, called dual empire, United States and Great Britain, and then, you know, Russia and China on the other side. How would that happen? Just off the subject here, but if you think that North Korea under any circumstances gonna give up their nuclear weapons, uh, what are you smoking? You know, after Gaddafi from Libya, was given promise that if he gives up weapons of mass destructions, nobody gonna ever try to overthrow him or kill him, was actually overthrown and was killed. Nobody believes one word that the United States or Great Britain says. Nobody believes our promises. Okay? I was in US Army for a couple of years, so that's why I say our promises. Uh, United States promises. Nobody believes them. So there's no way that North Korea is giving up the nuclear arsenal. There may be a way around it to allow for the nuclear sharing between China and North Korea, and China would release nuclear weapons to North Korea only under certain circumstances. But if you are hoping 
for North Korea to totally give up nuclear weapons, you are dreaming. That's not gonna happen. So, you know, we have to think if we wanna die for Crimea or do it choose life, we used to have an option. We used to have an option before, almost certainly, you know, we, the United States, and Great Britain staged coup in Ukraine, we had an option. You know, the option was to try to talk to Russians to guarantee neutrality of Ukraine and turning Ukraine into a neutral buffer state between Russia and NATO. Maybe, just maybe, Russians could have agreed. But our aggressive policy in Ukraine to... Uh, bring Ukraine into NATO's sphere of influence, you know, may backfire big time. And of course, in a case of nuclear war, there's gonna be a lot of BS, like, you know, guilty gonna get punished, or the guilty got punished, all that BS. It's gonna be all BS. It's gonna be all hot air. It's gonna be meaningless. Because people who are gonna get punished are gonna be poor schnooks like you and me. That's the people who are gonna get punished. I don't have high hopes that people like President Putin or President Xi gonna be captured and put before a military or a tribunal or some kind of court. That's not gonna happen. So no, only bunch of poor schnooks like you and me gonna die and gonna suffer. The elites, they gonna be okay. So uh, with that, you know, we should try to stop the war before it happens. And good health to all of you.